So Bill, you asked me a question, have we ever been in any studies? People don't let me get in there to take camera pictures to figure out when they actually got in the shower. It's a real problem to measure that one. We're working on it. There's some people working on that particular measurement question. So we could put the pump back here somewhere. That's great if you can get it at the attic. It's great, no, but you've got a thing that needs repair that's now up in your attic. What do you think? Not a good idea. How about if we were to say we could take this pump and put it underneath one of these sinks? And we use the cold water line now as a temporary return because I can't get at the wall anywhere. All right, what if I were able to do that? Now what have I done? I now get hot water all the way out to here, which is a whole lot closer to the last fixture than back there was, without having to add piping and extra labor and all the things that consumers get upset about ultimately. All right? The correct way in my mind, I really like dedicated return lines. Do you know why? I don't like hot and cold going in the same pipe all the time. Um, and so that just turns out to be an interesting problem. But you know what? I've retrofit my own home with the same technology because I don't have an easy solution. I have the worst of all possible worlds, as far as I can tell. Uninsulated copper pipe under a slab that runs 70 feet from the water heater to the last fixture. I have my own built-in heat sink. It's great. It's a wonderful system. Someday I'm going to fix it. All right? And we'll repipe the house at that point because that's the right thing to do. All right? But for now, I use one of these kinds of pumps. Yes, sir? Depends on the type of pump you pick. It turns out there's three kinds of retrofit pumps. Um, there's a product from Grunfuss, Comfort Flow. There's a product from Lang, uh, AquaCirc, I think, or AutoCirc. And there's a product from uh, Metland, uh, Worspo, uh, or Upinor now, and uh, Taco. It's an on-demand pump. Okay? There's probably a couple of others that are out there now, but they fall into two, two or three classes. There's time and temperature, and there's push or pull. So, AutoCirc from Grunfuss, um, sorry, AutoCirc from Lang and ComfortFlow from Grunfuss are all time and temperature types. With Grunfuss, you put the pump near the water heater and a valve that opens and closes under the sinks that are far away. It's a great idea. Uh, with Lang, you put the pump under the sink, and it's got a valve built in. It's time and temperature again. Time and temperature-based systems work the following way. If I had a time and temperature-based system here, and the hot side of the valve saw 105 degrees for shutoff, what would the cold side of the valve say? 105 degrees. It's like that far away. So how many feet back toward the water heater is it going to be still hotter than cold water? I'm back at the kitchen now, right? You think it's still going to be hot? Well, it's not going to be 60 degrees anymore, right? or 50. It's not cold water yet. That's the dilemma. If you run a system that operates on demand, there's a delta T that tells it when to cut, shut off, not an absolute temperature. So it's looking for a rise in temperature above ambient pipe temperature. So if it, the ambient pipe temperature and you wake up in the morning is what temperature in the house under the sink? 68, 70 degrees, somewhere in there, is that about right, 72, 70, good number. It's going to look for a temperature rise of about 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that hot water? Is it cold water? But it's not much worse than 70 because that was the temperature of the pipe, right? right? What's the temperature back over here near the kitchen? First thing in the morning under the sink, about 70 degrees. Right. What's the temperature in the pipes? I don't know, whatever temperature it was when you woke up in the morning. Could be close to freezing. Your pipes are in your attic. Right. Could be sort of warm. Whatever it is at early in the morning, that's what they'd be. Okay. So it's going to shut off when it sees a rise in temperature of about 5 degrees. Is that hot water? No. Where's the hot water? Eh, probably about here. In this case, maybe about here. Moves it pretty fast. Again, not perfect, but an awful lot closer than it was all the way over there. So when you turn on the pump and it tells it to come on and it runs for seconds here, 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds at the outside in this house, you'd end up with warm, not quite hot water here at this fixture. The trunk line's going to have hot water somewhere between that point here and right where I'm standing. So if you're taking a shower, which is the reason you turn on the hot water in the first place, how far away is the hot water? A whole lot closer than it was to begin with. Does that make sense to everybody? 
if I were building this house new, I would plan a dedicated return line with the ability to tell the pump to shut off back here. And in fact, I'd think seriously about running my trunk line out this far to here. Actually, I would run my trunk line right here and come down the wall, come through, and then back up to head home. And the reason I do it is this, if I could get around the stacks. I realize there's a stack problem. I could run horizontally in the wall one cup's worth to pick up either of these fixtures, couldn't I? Right? You've got to think horizontal and vertical. And that's the idea that we could do. We could run horizontally in the wall, if possible, to go from there to here. Pick up the, sh the tub shower at two feet off the floor, right? And the shower at four feet off the floor. And I've only got a five foot twig. Less than five feet is less than a cup, right? I could put my pump under the sink, couldn't I? I could put it in the middle of the trunk line, not using the twig as to get back up to the trunk, and run my trunk back up and go back to the water heater. All that's possible to do. Does this add cost to a system? Yeah. Is it a huge cost? No. OK. Do you think you could sell the value of this to a consumer? People want hot water quicker than they're getting it now. If when you bought your house, you were able to say, for an extra 1,000 bucks, I could have hot water within 5 or 10 seconds anywhere in the house, anybody interested? I think we could sell that value. Retrofit, oh, it's a pain in the neck. Forget it. No one wants to do it. So that's another way of doing this. Now we've covered two basic methods, right? What have we covered? Trunk and branch, which is the traditional one. I want to call that trunk, branch, and twig. By the way, there were no branches in this house, were there? All right. And then what else would we do? We've done a recirc, both dedicated return, using the, the, the cold water line as a return, whether it's new construction or retrofit, doesn't matter. All right? Now, I need four more volunteers. Oh, actually, you as a group need to do something else. Take up all the, 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 the white pipe, please. Pull it up. I need some more volunteers. Let's get the pipe up quick. I got one more plumbing type to show. Everything, all, uh, all white pipe or beige or whatever color that is. All the pipe comes up, everything else stays on the floor. All right. Does anybody here know what a manifold system is? Anybody? Some folks know what they are. Does this look like a dedicated manifold system? Anybody recognize this? Anybody ever seen one of these? OK. How about one of these? Come on, I know you guys have seen this one before. All right. Aren't these manifolds? Isn't a T a one-port manifold? Yes? Everyone got the idea? <laughs> this is a multi-port manifold, right? <laughs> That's what these are. Now, these are dedicated manifolds with valves on them. Why would you do this? You guys sell this stuff. Why would you do this? Isolate to isolate fixtures. Where would you put this in this house? By the source of heat. By the source of heat. OK. So let's put this at the source of heat. Come on, you can volunteer. This is good. You're going to stand over here. And you're going to hold this on the wall over here so it can be seen. And where is it going to go on the wall? That's the water heater. That's got to go on the wall. Where is it going to go? Well, it could come inside the house and be in the laundry room. That would be a pretty slick solution. Um, I need to, the two of you. Come over here. Stand up over here. Stand back to back. Who wants to be the water heater? You can be the water heater. You're going to be the manifold. <laughs> the shortest distance from the water heater into the manifold is up, over, and down behind the wall. The best answer is to put this manifold on the inside of the house on this wall in the, in the laundry room. I have never seen it there yet. Where I've seen it is in the garage about here compared to the water heater. By the way, I've seen it 30 feet away which is not in near the source of heat very much, is it? But we could do that, right? So why don't you stand right about here, uh, stand right next to Dave, it's okay. And we're going to call the distance from the water heater, you guys can sit down, give him a hand, this is great. 